welcome to the Gardening Tutor channel. Today we're going to be talking about pruning fuchsias so that you can get lots of flowers. And um, might surprise you, but we're going to be pruning this big fuchsia right down to about uh, six to eight inches of just stems. So let's go ahead and start. Um, oh, by the way, I'm in Sonoma County in Santa Rosa, California, and we prune our fuchsias in January. So you'll have to adjust for your planting zone, but you want to prune the fuchsias when they're dormant before they start pushing their new growth. Now we have growth here because it's been pretty warm this winter. Normally all of these leaves would be gone, um, but if they're not, that's okay. We're still going to prune it because we want to just put it into deeper dormancy and then when it's ready, it'll push its new growth. Okay, the first cut that we can make is just to get rid of all this bulk. So I'm going to just start cutting anywhere. You don't have to worry about where. I do the same thing with roses. Before I do the detailed cutting, I just cut away everything that's in my way. And then I just put everything on a tarp. So I'm just going to move my tarp over here close. Hang on, I'll be right back. And I don't even touch these. Look, I'm just doing it all with my lopper and throwing it onto the tarp. Okay, so I'm going to continue cutting all of this and then I'll be right back. Okay, I've started cleaning up down here, all in here, just just cutting them to clear these out. But so there's no confusion, I want to adjust the ones that I've allowed to climb up into this trellis. This, this plant is so big that it could be in a much um, bigger space in my garden but I don't have the space and I love the flowers so much that I allow this to be on the trellis but that's really not my intention so I'm going to be clearing these all away when, when you're new to gardening you might look at this and think oh you're just going to cut here and here um, but that's not what we're doing today we're rejuvenating this whole fuchsia so it'll come in nice and full all the way from the ground up with no spindly growth so I'm going to remove all of this now um, I do want to say, if you have a habitat garden where you are attracting wildlife, birds, and such, um, people that have the habitat gardens, they, they wouldn't even prune their fuchsia, probably. They would just let it be a mass over the years. But I like mine to be a little more tidy and fuller, and I'm guiding the form of my plant with my pruning. All right, uh, we have uh, the bulk cut off the top and I've cleared out all the fuchsia stems from the trellis. Now the next step is to clean up all of these leaves that are in here. And you can use the rake on say the front part like this to clean up these leaves. And I like the shrub rake because it's more gentle on plants. Um, the tines move so it's better than using a hard stiff plastic um, rake. But I can rake up all of this in here and clean this up. But inside here, I'm gonna use my hands. So I, and I'm gonna be gentle because I don't wanna break off any potential new growth that could be under here. Usually there's not, you get that more with hydrangeas, the new growth coming up from the ground, but just to be on the safe side. So I'm gonna keep cleaning this up. Oh, back to, just before we, break here for a sec while I clean this up. I prune my fuchsias when I prune my roses. And you can prune a lot of things here in Sonoma County in January, but to adjust for your zone whenever you're pruning your roses, it's probably when you'll be pruning your fuchsias. All right, I'm going to clean this up. We'll be right back. I've cleaned up most of this, but I left this to show you. When you have a bunch of debris in here, the old leaves, it's hard to get them out sometimes with your hand. And so you can cut one of the stems that you've already pruned out of here as a little tool. This, this works in a lot of different gardening situations when you need to get, see how you can get this right out of there. And then you can slide it underneath and scoot them out. All right, so everything's pretty cleaned up. The other reason for cleaning up all the debris is that snails and slugs and earwigs, sow bugs, and all kinds of insects love it when you leave all the dead leaves on the ground underneath your flowering plants. They just love that. So 
and then they come up and infect your plant and then you have to start spraying so better to keep a clean area in the first place all right i want to talk about heading cuts versus thinning cuts so that when i'm in there pruning and i say i'm going to do a thinning cut you know what i'm talking about here's a one of the stems of the fuchsia and i want to point out how you can see the leaves are going the new stems are going to come out from the nodes and the node is this part right here this bump on the stem that's a node in between here and the next node is called an inner node and nothing will grow in here so when you're doing your cuts you're going to cut right above a node and in this case we don't have any leaves we're not going to have any leaves left but you're going to be cutting just above a node and this would be called a heading cut when you just prune a stem somewhere along its length that's a heading cut. If you're gonna do a thinning cut, let me show you a thinning cut. If you could come up here and see this branching out, a thinning cut would be to remove this whole stem from its origin. So a thinning cut is gonna be like that. Just take it right out from its origin. That's not a very sharp cut, but we can clean that up later. Um, so we have heading cuts and thinning cuts. Heading cuts are going to invigorate more growth, and the thinning cuts, when you remove it from its origin, that's going to take out bulk from your plant. Now we're going to go in and start pruning in this area down here. First, in pruning, you there's D, 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 and C, and you'll see it on all of my pruning videos where I'm talking about pruning out, looking for dead. This is dead here because it's, it's a different color, and if you're not sure if it's dead or not, in fact, it could be wrong. I, this could be alive. You can do a... Let me get this out of your way. Can you see in here? You can open up a little window in the stem. Keep all your fingers close together and bite into it a little bit and open this up and see if it's still alive and it's pretty brown in there you want it to be cream i'll do it to this one right here that i know is alive i keep my fingers close together and i open up a little see that how that i don't know if you can see but it's nice and green this one's alive and this one i can tell is pretty dead if i pulled on it hard enough it would snap off so I'm going to do a thinning cut to get that dead part out of there. And on the stems that I want to leave, I'm going to shorten them a little more. Let's look at this one right here. On this one, I'm going to do a heading cut instead of that thinning cut. I cut that right above this, these nodes, and there's another set of nodes under here. So with this fuchsia, I can cut pretty far down, and it is going to grow up five or six feet during the season. It's pretty amazing fuchsia. Here, I'm gonna, this one is just kind of coming through here, and I don't need it, and it's spindly. And you want to remove the spindly growth, so I'm going to actually turn my pruner over so that the cutting edge is closest to where this stem is coming from, I'm gonna do a thinning cut. So I'm directing all the future growth here. And I'm also pruning away from this trellis because I don't really want it to grow up into the trellis again. So I have pruned out some of these. I'm gonna prune out one more back here. You won't be able to see it up close, but I'm gonna do a thinning cut really close because I'm trying to direct all the growth to come this way on this plant. If you don't have a wall behind your fuchsia, well then you're gonna just go for good balance and you can you don't have to make a, a flat back of your fuchsia. And once this all grows in, you won't be able to tell. It's all full and it won't look like it has a flat back. So anything that's spindly like this, this doesn't serve any purpose, do a thinning cut get it right out. 
anything that you want to bush lower because if you leave a tall stem like this in the spring the new growth is mainly going to push in the upper part of the stem so we want this fuchsia to bush out leafy all the way down almost to the ground so i'm going to leave i'm going to leave two or three sets of nodes on all of my cuts so here's a set of nodes where leaves will come out and here's another one set of nodes okay here's crossing so we have d d d and c dead diseased damaged and crossing so here's one that's crossing over and i just want to clean that up so i don't really need that little it's kind of scrawny i'm going to prune that out and then i have a damaged one over on this side i want to show you Okay, here it is. Here's the damage, a little damaged part. And this happened because I hit it just now when I was cleaning up the leaves. So remember that your plants are kind of brittle at this time of year, the dormant time, and it's easy to damage a piece. This one, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to just do a thinning cut to take it out. Um, but you wanna be gentle when you're in there cleaning up all the leaves. So I'm trying to keep the, this as concise as I can. I'm gonna do a few more cuts and then I'll clean this whole thing up and show you what it looks like. Okay, um, so just remember to start with anything that's dead, prune it out. Like I'm looking in this area, I'm not really seeing anything dead, but I see this down here. Okay, here's a spindly one. Remember, spindly ones, they're not going to do anything for you. That's not going to give you new leaves and flowers. This one is spindly. Taking that out. This one can come out. I can shorten this one. If it's pencil size or bigger, you're going to keep it. If it's pencil size or smaller, you'll decide whether you're keeping it or not. But when it gets really small, you're definitely taking it out. But I'm going to go ahead and just shorten this one. Do a heading cut way down here. I only need to leave one or two sets of nodes. You see what just happened there? That, that is because my, sharp, my pruner needs to be sharpened. <laughs> so if your pruners are smushing a stem, they need to be sharpened. So that was good that that happened. Here is the dead one I wanted to show you. This is dead, so we don't need it. So I'm doing a thinning cut and taking it right out of there. Just cleaning everything up, just like a rose. And I have a rose pruning video too, so you can check that out. Now, I'm gonna clean up the rest of this, but I've already done one over here, and so we'll pause a second, we'll move over to this other section to show you. Um, and then I'm gonna show you the most important pruning for your fuchsia to give you the most flowers. Here is a section of this fuchsia that I've completed for you, so that you can see you can prune out way more than you think you can, and you can prune it down pretty far. So this is about, my hand is about six inches long, so uh, about I'm going for about six inches from the soil up, my overall size on the, the finished pruning cuts. So you want to do dead, damaged, diseased, and crossing so that you can clean it up if you just imagine all the leaves that are going to come from these, there's plenty left right here, even though we cut away quite a bit. Now I'm going to show you what to do once the leaves start coming in, because this is the most important part to give you the most flowers and the bushiest, most full plant. Let me find my prop and I'll be right back. This is the most important part so that you can get the most flowers with the bushiest, fullest, most beautiful fuchsia. Once you start seeing new growth come in uh, towards spring, as soon as you have a few, a couple of sets of leaves, come in and you're gonna come in with your bare hands. I'm not gonna take my gloves off, but you can come in with your bare hands and you're gonna pinch out just the tip, just those little leaves at the tip. But since I can't do it with my gloves on, I'm just gonna show you, I'm actually gonna take out a little bit more. I'm gonna turn this. I'm gonna go in here and just snip that out okay when you do that it sends the oxen there's a hormone called oxen and it sends it down and makes the lower branches push more and you'll have and then you'll also have to tip those you'll 
pinch out the tips of those leaves and then you'll it'll invigorate more growth more branching which means more flowers and we all want those so um, you'll do that about three or four separate occasions and then at some point you need to stop pinching so that your plant can fill in all right oh good luck and let me know how it goes thank you for watching the gardening tutor video and um, please see us on pinterest and on our website at thegardeningtutor.com and on facebook and i'll see you real soon Here's an extra tip for uh, hanging fuchsia in a pot. First, you can do the same thing. You can use a stick to help you get out all of the debris. And then it's gonna be the same thing. You're gonna be pruning out dead, uh, damaged, disease, and crossing. But the trick with the hanging fuchsias is keep your cuts um, just to the outside of the edge of the pot um, in general. Sometimes you'll have some of these growing in here and you can leave them about three inches high or say three sets of nodes But let me show you right over here on this one. I'm probably just gonna do this and This and then I'm gonna prune out the spindly do a thinning cut and I'm gonna carry on like that and then I'll shorten This one's pretty spindly. I don't even know if I'll keep it, but I would shorten anything uh, pencil and thicker, shorten them with a heading cut. All right, good luck.